we created an ASP.NET Core Web API from scratch in .NET 8. As a result, we can create and run our own API endpoints using Swagger. The project created a controller for our endpoints and app settings.json file for our settings. It also added configuration in program.cs by adding add controllers and map controllers. So how do you create an ASP.NET Core Web API? Well, stick around because in this tutorial, we'll show you the steps on how to create one. First of all, we want to make sure that we've got Visual Studio 2022 installed. So in Google, we'll do a search for Visual Studio 2022. We'll click on the link and we'll scroll down and we can download either the community, the professional or the enterprise. The community edition is the free edition and that's the version we're going to be using in this tutorial. If you already have Visual Studio 2022 installed, you need to make sure that it's version 17.8 or above. We can find that out by going to help and about Microsoft Visual Studio. Our version is 17.8.0, so we're OK. However, we may need to update it so we can go back into help and check for updates. If there's a new version to install, you can do it on this screen. Installing the latest version of Visual Studio 2022 should download the .NET 8 SDK. We can do a check to see if it's on our machine, so we do .NET hyphen hyphen list hyphen SDKs. If there's a version that begins with 8 or above, you should be fine. If you do need to download the .NET 8 SDK, you can do a search for it in Google. Ensure that it's the SDK that you download. It's available in Windows, Mac, and Linux. With the software installed, we can now create the ASP.NET Core Web API in Visual Studio. With Visual Studio open, let's create a new project. We're going to do a search for Web API, select ASP.NET Core Web API with C Sharp, and click Next. We give the project a name, we're going to call it RoundTheCode.WebAPI. We'll leave the location and the solution name as they are. For the framework, we'll select .NET 8 long-term support and all the other settings can be left as they are. This will create the project for us. We now have our ASP.NET Core Web API project set up. Let's talk about what's been created. It's added this weather forecast controller and it's added a route with the controller name, the controller name being weather forecast. It's also added this API controller attribute. And what this means is it has certain attributes for API endpoints. It's also added an endpoint for the get, so getting the weather forecast. It's got a HTTP get and it's passed in the name of get weather forecast. It's going through and displaying all the weather details and putting it as part of the response. It's also created an app settings and an app settings.development file. What these two do is store configuration values for our web API. The difference between the two is any settings that are in the development file will override the main app settings.json if the web API is running in development. So for example, we've got these values here. We can override them in development so we can change the default to warning. And when we run it in development, it will use this value over the main app settings.json. If we go into program.cs, it's added add controllers and map controllers. This ensures that web API controllers can be used in our project. The project has also added Swagger. Swagger is a helpful tool for displaying API endpoints and adding technical documentation. By default, Swagger is only added in the development environment only. Unless you want to publicly expose your web API endpoints, it's best to keep them there. Now that we have a bit more understanding on how an ASP.NET Core Web API works, let's run the application. The Web API has loaded up the Swagger documentation and shows all our Web API endpoints. We've only got one at the moment, which is weather forecast. We can try it out, execute, and that returns our weather forecasts as the response. It's also outputted this address, so if we hit this into a browser, we also get the response as well. So that's how you create an ASP.NET Core Web API project, but we've only really touched the surface with it. Watch this video next to continue learning about ASP.NET Core Web APIs, how they work, and how to use them.